Welcome to episode 9 of Walking Wisdom with me, Dr. Amon Bosley. You know, I once had a client who was on Instagram ask me why I'm always smiling, why I'm always cheerful, how I'm always in such a good mood. Well, the truth is I'm not always in a good mood. I'm not always jubilant or uh, blowing bubbles out of some kind of contraption. There are days when I feel dismayed and hopeless and as uh, uh, worried as the rest of y'all. You see, despite the fact that I'm smiling right now, uh, it's not exactly a smile to celebrate something because as we all know, the country is currently going through a massive and deadly second wave of the COVID-19 coronavirus. There is a dearth of uh, beds, hospital beds, oxygen supply. Um, just generally, there's a bit of a scramble for resources and contacts and good offices are being tapped and uh, nervous messages are everywhere, whether you check WhatsApp or Instagram. You'll notice there's a constant bombardment of messages about where can I get Remdesivir? Uh, is anyone doing collections or testing at homes? Where can food be made available for senior citizens so that they can have door-to-door -door service? Who's a good doctor? All these questions and more are raising panic. Uh, I wouldn't say creating panic because the situation is uh, worthy of that kind of response, wouldn't you say? Uh, it's a bit crazy right now. The case load at hospitals is unmanageable. Doctors are posting videos uh, describing the severity of the situation and how dire uh, the lack of resources has become for them and how their hands are tied and they feel helpless. What we are currently experiencing is a national emergency. So today's episode of Walking Wisdom is all about finding hope through these grim times that we are all living in. It's a shared reality. Some would call it a calamity and maybe it is. Maybe it is a breakdown of uh, healthcare systems. Uh, there's been very, very uh, strong uh, and very, very angry stuff being said all over social media, more so in context to the ruling party, um, in context to the rallies that are taking place, in context to the Kumbh Mela. So I'm not going to talk about that stuff because you guys know I don't discuss politics or religion. But what I will discuss is how we as people, as human beings, as individuals, those of us living alone like me, those of us living with our families, how can we as individuals cope through this madness and try to inject a little bit of glimmer of hope through this situation, as difficult or challenging or hokey, or maybe even hollow it sounds at this point. This is a sincere attempt to give you some hope. Um, how do you sort of fortify your mind against all this stress and all this conjecture against these gloom and doom scenarios? Where do I even begin? For starters, I'm not gonna be saying anything to y'all to the tune of be positive. How the hell are you supposed to be positive or optimistic in such a pathetic situation where people are dying, there are no places to burn the bodies, uh, there was an oxygen tank leakage that took place in Nasik, due to which 22 people died at a hospital. All right, I'm not a journalist. I don't want to say what people far more competent than me are already saying on the news. But I am a psychotherapist, so my tips would be limited and highly focused to give you some respite and perspective through this shared experience of hell that I think everyone is going through, uh, whether or not you know someone who's infected with the COVID, whether or not someone in your family is infected, whether or not you yourself have gone through it, or whether you're just someone sitting on the sidelines and just watching the chaos unravel in our country. Tip number one, don't fight what you're feeling. Don't be in denial of any emotion. There are some days where even I experience a great degree of despair and I feel extremely sunken and low and uh, you know I got to yank myself out of it because I live alone. I have no one to sit and talk to over a cup of evening tea. So there are some days where it gets extremely punishing for me as well. You know this constant rally that's taking place in my head of what's going to happen, how soon is it going to happen, is what's going to happen going to be a better version of events as they've transpired or are things going to actually get worse from here? Are things going to go downhill from here? So this overthinking, this chatter, uh, don't fight it, accept it, become a good spectator of your thoughts, become a good observer of your thoughts, thoughts and feelings for that matter. 
be a good spectator of your thoughts. Don't merge with your thoughts or don't succumb to your thoughts. Uh, this was an example given to me by one of my teachers very long time ago. He said, when you're sleeping, unless you are dreaming, you're not having any thoughts actively, right? You're not thinking about what you want to have for lunch the next day. You're not thinking about what movie you want to watch. So do you cease to become... Uh, sorry, do you cease to be yourself when you're sleeping? Of course not. You still maintain your identity. You're still very much alive. Your body's still very much functioning. So all these thoughts, all these thoughts that are worrisome, that are tiresome, don't be in denial of them. Yes, if they burden you and give you a sense of grief, don't fight with that grief. Accept it and let it transit through. Let it pass through you like a wave. Let it just blow like the wind, you know, from one corner of the mind to the other. And that's a perfectly normal thing to uh, happen as well you know all these conflicting thoughts uh, are you know kind of trying to bite at your heels and make you stop and think oh oh no oh no oh no <laughs> it's very common happens with everyone believe me it even happens uh, with uh, people who are extremely sorted extremely successful extremely good looking uh, leaders of industry what many people commonly refer to as overthinking right in common parlance the more you wrestle with it the more it fights back against you to get your attention so, so that, that you feel more in control of the situation as it stands. Tip number two is find a suitable distraction and by that I mean watch some light entertainment, a sitcom, maybe on Netflix, maybe play a video game. I play on my PlayStation 4 sometimes. Sometimes it's good to have an out of body experience and just escape your surroundings and just become someone else uh, so you can contend with problems that are not your own. Uh, especially when you are vicariously experiencing them as someone who plays a video game, as someone who is witnessing a narrative unfold on screen. Uh, I also highly recommend reading for those of you all uh, for whom that is an entirely foreign concept. I get it, not a lot of people like to read nowadays. Uh, some people still do like me. But even for guys like me who really enjoy reading, it's a discipline that needs to be inculcated. So I remember I used to get spread pretty thin with all the stuff that I was doing. Uh, so I had not read as much as I wanted to for a certain period. Also because of the fact that we are constantly glued to our screens, you know, my clients, my friends, everyone interfaces with me through. Uh, you know, the various messengers that I'm on, the WhatsApps of this world, etc. It's also the conduit through which we get news. So then the reading suffers, it doesn't happen. But I highly encourage you to read books, any book, any book that gives you peace, clarity and something to mull over, that upgrades the way you think, that challenges your attitude, so that informs you a little bit about how this world works. So you don't feel like you live so much in a bit of a bubble or a shell. I highly recommend that you get a membership to a music streaming service. It's not very expensive, guys. It's not going to drain uh, your wealth. Uh, listen to music, at least for a short while during the day. Any music, it's not a specific genre of music. It's music that basically puts a smile on your face, gives you respite, gives you a little bit of hope, a little bit of uh, happiness. So you don't so much just listen to music as much as you experience it, you commune with it, it becomes a part of you. I know this sounds a little lofty, but believe me, it works, guys. It really does. It may sound like a very simplistic tip. Oh no, he says, listen to music and my problems will go away. Who's saying your problems will go away? But for a while, the problems don't seem as invasive and they don't feel like the impediments and the gigantic monsters that they are. So if you can't take away the pain, at least you can reduce a bit of its bite, a bit of its sting, isn't it? And my third tip, but last tip, to give you a little bit of hope and peace, is please connect with like-minded individuals. You have to become extremely um, severe in your curation process of who you call as friends, who you let into your lives, who speaks to you, who has access to you, who follows you on social media, all these things apply. If you surround yourself with angry, pessimistic, jealous, bitter, lazy, people who bear a grudge against individuals, society, or just people who are cantankerous or who like to gossip in each other's ears or those who are passive aggressive or like to engage in cold wars or those who are extremely dictatorial and pushy in the way they communicate. If you surround yourself with these people, uh, and unfortunately sometimes you can't escape such people if they're living in your house, then that is going to simply compound your stress. So it's very important to keep a clean and keep a very cohesive circle of people within your network who are able to yank you out of the well if you find yourself slipping and losing your footing. Do you know what I mean? People who uplift you, people who force you to upgrade yourself, people who challenge you, but at the same time are benevolent, generous, 
and extremely nurturing of you, people who believe in you, people who believe in your potential for growth, people who are not trying to drag you down to their level, but who are trying to help you elevate yourself to the levels that you are uniquely capable of reaching as an individual, as a thinking individual, as a competent, creative individual. Now make no mistake, such people are extremely hard to find. So when you do find them, please don't let go of them. Please treat them as the national, international, private treasures that they are. Really hold on to them, really give them your best, really uh, take care of them, express to them what they mean to you because it is these people who will create what I refer to as a micro uh, psychological ecosystem within which you thrive, within which you can find yourself happy and free. All right, so your friends will determine, your mood very often will determine, your attitudes very often will determine, your choices very often will even uh, you know, influence the ambitions that you strive towards, isn't it? So. You know, it's important to be a keen curator and that's my third tip. It is my earnest attempt to keep these videos as short and succinct and to the point as possible. But I do uh, tend to meander on sometimes because I don't plan what I'm going to say during these videos. They're entirely spontaneous. So you can tell with my attire, these are shot during my morning walk as a way for me to express myself, but also to connect with the small community that follows me here on Instagram. If you're watching this and you found it useful, you're welcome to share it. If you didn't find it useful, <laughs> that's all right as well. Um, I'm just trying to give you a little something to work with, to bring back the smile on your face if you feel that it's gone missing. Just a little something to give you strength to power through these extraordinary, uh, slightly unbelievable times that we are living through as a nation, as Indians. And we can't predict the future. We can't predict what's even going to happen uh, towards the second half of our day. But what we can entirely control is our attitudes, our behaviors, our expectations. And we try to do what we can, isn't it? So that's it from me today on Walking Wisdom. I hope you found this video useful. Take care, stay sane, stay healthy, stay grateful and stay masked. <laughs>